Don't mind me guys, I'm just doing a bit of exercise with this beautiful masterpiece right here. We have got the Wii Creat slide extension. I have got the Wii Creat Lumos right there. We're gonna combine the two together and I'm gonna show you exactly what this thing to do. We've got three projects lined up. Stay tuned and we're gonna crack straight on with them. Now there are plenty of in-depth tutorials out there, but I'm gonna run you through this, okay? You get these two little L brackets. We wanna be getting started with these. And on your little build plate here, you've got two little right angled white lines. So the first thing we're gonna do is take those L brackets and screw them into the place so that they line up with it. And this is gonna be giving us our platform to mount our extension rail onto. So I'm just gonna quickly do this live on the camera for you. I'm not gonna speed anything up. So there we go, that's the first stage done. The second thing I recommend doing is taking your slide extension, if I put it there, and putting your cables in. When you plug these in, you're gonna see one of them's got five pins and the other's got four. You can't get these the wrong way around, so make sure you put them in. I would probably put them in first just because it's easier. That is the back of the unit, by the way. So right away, what we're gonna do now is we are gonna get our slide extension, which comes pre-assembled, may I add. And we are gonna basically, you see that arrow right there? We're gonna line that up with the rear of this mount here. So this is gonna sit within both of those corner brackets we just put on. It is a bit of a wiggle to get it in, but you'll see it'll only go in one way, and once it's in, it's pretty solid. So let me give you a nice close-up of how that looks. You should be able to see there, yep, you can see. That's the approximate position you wanna be putting that in. And the other one at the back, which we can't see is there. So there you go, we have our initial slide extension installed in the mechanical position. The next thing we are gonna do is take those two cables and we are gonna come around the back here and we are gonna plug them in. And like I said, I'll show you the actual connectors here. You'll see that one there, if I zoom out, has got five, six pins, not five, it's got six and it's got a little notch cut out there. So we're gonna line it up with that and it will only go in one way, push it in, tighten that up. Easy as that, we're gonna do the next one now and I'll show you once again. This one here has got four pins, really easy. There is also a notch cut out on it. So therefore we are gonna line that up again and push it in place, screw in place. And that is literally it plugged in physically, um, if I actually end up screwing that in. You might wanna manage these cables a bit. I'm just gonna leave mine like this because I'm showing you guys live. But that is it live and good to go. Now one thing I wanna show you are these little rails here. You get one either side, you get one that side, one that side, and they can pull up. They, they're spring loaded on the side. So this is what we're gonna to use to secure, or this is what we can use to secure our materials down. You've also got another alignment ruler there. They all come off by the way because they all have this chamfered kind of tapered shape that fits into the slider rail. Um, and yeah, nice and easy to come in and out. I don't need that one. So I am gonna be using these two for our first engraving. And what we'll do is we will take our piece of material. And in this case, I am gonna be doing a piece of basswood. I think it's three millimeters, this there or thereabouts. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna move this over, you'll see. I'm gonna move it over and I'm gonna sit it just so it's over the edge, okay? We can straighten it up in a minute. We're gonna do the same with this side right here. And now you'll see it's actually, if I look at it, there's a slight overlap. That is what you're using those rails for. They are, they double up as a way to secure your item down. And also you've got these thumb screws here, which once you've got it in the place, you can tighten it and then it can't move, which is critical because you want whatever you put on here to stay on here, because this is gonna be moving back and forth. And here we have it secured in place on both sides. I have tightened these thumb screws here and I have made a note, you can't see it anymore, but I made a note of the position on here that is sat in. That's helpful if you just wanna get your design lined up, but you're gonna see now in the software that we can use the camera to actually align things and then we are gonna frame things. The first thing we're gonna do is connect our machine. So make sure your machine's turned on, make sure you've got it plugged in. I'm gonna go via USB, click that. It always asks me this. I don't have a premium membership set up at the moment, so I'm gonna click cancel. And by default, up to the top right, laser flat is selected. This is what we use when we actually engrave with the We Create Lumos. In this case though, we are gonna to wanna to click on that button and then select the auto slider. 
we'll do that. And then what you'll see is the workspace has now changed to adopt to the size of the actual slide extension. Next thing we want to do is click initialize at the top right here and we'll do that. And what you're going to see now is the machine itself will start to move back and forth. It will then position itself in the, well, where it declares itself as in zero position. So once you've done that, you want to click the refresh button. There you go. So it's got the left side, but you can actually see that is where my board starts. And I could use the measurements on the actual slide extension to work out exactly where we are. But I know in this case, I just need to put my design here because that's where I want it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to import an image. And here we go. It's going to scale it down. And this is a classic image I like to use on most things. Anyone who does actually um, follow me should know that I use this. I'm going to remove the background on this image because we don't want it to actually try and put the background because the background often drowns out images. So I'm going to go into image edit image and then this little magic wand here if i click the white area it will remove it as if by magic which is what we want i'm then gonna remove i'm gonna rotate my image by 90 degrees like that and i want to literally fill this workspace here and i am going to fill it just like that because we've got a slide extension so in theory we can fill that whole workspace and it's going to move left and right what i'll do with image processing i always like to set the grayscale down by a couple of notches to make my image black and white. I always feel like it's going to do a better job like that. And I'll keep everything else the same. The thing I'm going to do at this stage, I'm just going to apply my settings just so that I know the image is set up. And the settings I like to use, I've got this set by default, which is three millimeter password. Um, I've also got the blue light selected, by the way. And I will select my image and I go for 100 power. I'm going to be doing 295 DPI and I'm going to be doing 255 dot duration. So that should, in theory, give me exactly what I need. Give me a nice engraving. The next thing we want to do is frame the image. And what will happen when we do that, and we're going to do that by clicking this button here, it will then move the slide extension and do a framing box around the extent that you can see there, which is what we want to do just to confirm everything is positioned correctly. Now that we have framed our image, we are going to literally just click start. We're good to go. It's that simple to get this going. So I am going to click the start button. There you go. We have our workpiece. It looks a bit dark, but I'm pretty confident in setting in these settings. So we will give it a go. We'll now click the send button and it's going to send it through. And just as with any other engraving, we're going to click that start button. So let's move over to the actual machine. So before we get started, I just want to explain that with this, you need to make sure you move the cover down as far as you can. But as I said to you earlier, there are two thumb screws here to grab stuff and you don't you want to make sure you give those clearance so when you pull this down make sure you leave enough clearance that when it moves back and forth it's not going to catch on it and it's not going to damage them First engraving complete. And as you can see, that looks really cool. I'm not gonna move it yet because what I'm actually gonna try and do is I'm gonna try and cut it out. I'm gonna try and cut around it. So I'm gonna do a small offset and then try and get a nice clean cut around and we'll see if we can have, or if we can end up with a picture of me engraved onto wood cut out. Who doesn't want one of those lying around their room? We have finished the cutting pass. I'm going to loosen these off now and we are going to see if it's worked. You probably noticed there, I did quite a few, I did faster cuts, but more of them because I actually wanted to try and get the clean cut. So oh, this is looking good already. Look at that. We've got a nice pop out and there we go. There is our first slide extension 
creation and I'm actually really, really happy with that. That looks brilliant. Right, so let's move on to our next project. Now, I'm not sure if you remember at the start, I showed you some 3D printed material and it has actually finished now. So once I get the scraper, we're gonna get this out and we're gonna try and engrave on it next. And it would help if I had to scrape it the right around. There you go. So this is black PLA and I have deliberately designed it to fit along the whole path of our slide extension like that. So I am going to try and create a really cool sign or something with this 3D printed material and we'll see how well it comes out using the slide extension. We've got our PLA material set up in there. I did click the refresh button and I will do it again. And what it does is it moves the slide extension back to its zeroed position and then it actually does it better. There we go. I'm now going to import an image and this is a vector image I've got. And because it's going to be Halloween soon, I thought this is perfect. And I'm hoping we can film most of this this 3D printed material out. And how cool does that look? This is something I got off of Creative Fabrica, which is a subscription website. Um, I'm not affiliated, but I do like using their stuff. We've got our design on there. The settings I'm gonna show you now, we're doing a fill engrave. We are using the red laser, the infrared laser, the three watts. 100% power, 1,000 millimeters a second speed, and 240 line density. What I will say is I haven't actually tried 3D printed material on the Lumos yet. So this will be my first time. I have framed it already and I know it fits. So we're now gonna click on the start button. We're gonna get ready to send it across to the machine and then we will engrave. So let's take these rails off and let's have a good look at this one because this looks brilliant. I mean, how cool is that? I, I 3D printed this. It took me about probably 30 minutes and yeah, you can make some really cool signs. That is a great thing to do with a slide extension. And I'm very impressed with that. Let's move on to the third and the final one. And the final thing is a chopping board. And I am actually gonna use this to create a legitimate project. And this will be for my sister at Christmas time. I mean, we are, we are currently only in, well, it's September still when I'm recording this, but this will be a Christmas present for my sister. I've got the piece laid on there. I'm not gonna clamp it down. I'm hoping the weight of it will be enough to do it. So this is gonna be a nice simple one. I'm just gonna put, so her surname is Lane. So I'm just gonna put the lanes right across it. Gonna look good. You can see I haven't focused the laser yet. So I'm gonna do that now. And there we go. And now we'll switch back over to the software. I have refreshed in the top right and now you can see the start of our chopping board so it, it's worth me noting actually you can see up there you've got zero i did line this up with zero and it's actually on there perfectly so i'm really happy with that and we've got 400 millimeters to play with here so this is going to be a simple one so this is acacia wood i think um, and i'm sure there probably isn't an acacia wood setting here so i'm going to go with cherry wood maybe and that's going to be my default set in there and I think in this case, I will just be doing text. So we're gonna put in, I'm gonna put the text in here, the lanes like that, that's it. It's, it's gonna be a really simple one, this one, but it'll give, it, give us a good idea of how well it does with wood, and like a nice solid wood as it's doing it. I've got a font, I ended up picking on Della Gothic one and there are different fonts in here. I've gone for a WeCreats own. We've got our cherry wood and one thing I want is a nice dark engraving on this. So I'm going to go with that. So speed 158, power 100, line density 100. We'll give that a go. We'll see how it goes. I'm going to frame it and now I'm going to switch the camera back on and you're going to watch this one engrave and let's hope it comes out nice.
There we go, we have a finished engraving and once again it has come out absolutely amazing. Let's take a look at this. So I am really, really impressed with that. I mean, it didn't take long either, it really didn't take long. Let me know what you think of the font choice, guys. I just wanted to give you guys one last look at everything we've done. So all of this was using the slider extension. There's nothing special about it. Just plugged it in, literally plug and play with the Weak React Lumos. It has done an absolutely outstanding job. I am so impressed with this. I mean, look at that. Look at all of it. I mean, this this as well, this is a great idea for anyone going forward. 3D print your little placard, super cheap, super quick, and then make your own little signs. I mean, Halloween's coming up, it's great. Thank you for watching, guys, and I hope you enjoy this, and I hope you learn something from it. And what I will say, if you are interested in getting yourself a Weak React Lumos, and they are an amazing machine, Check out the affiliate link in the description. You support the channel if you go through it, and I am extremely grateful. Thank you so much, guys, and have a lovely day.